Como sa va? That means how you doing? Me, I'm Tinu, and I hope you're ready to pass a good time because today we making a summertime fun time game. So I want to make a customized game that uses a flying disc. This is a good start. Ooh, 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 ooh. Heads up. Sorry. So to start this project off, what I did was I just started drawing. Kind of a stream of consciousness drawing, but centered around robots. And uh, some of these drawings are not very good. I'm not the greatest illustrator in the world. But part of this process is gonna be to just get a whole bunch of these out, pick a few, and then start refining those. <gasps> oh my God, tea noodles are terrible. Hey, tea noodles, the lady with the two heads? Boy, she's got your number, pal. Ladies and gentlemen, my daddy is here. Uh, yeah, hello, internet. Uh, I'm a little concerned with what I'm seeing on the screen here. Uh, is that a tracing table? That's exactly right. Do you know that's cheating? Good lord, that's not how I see it. I'm, these are my own drawings, and I use this tracing table to try to refine the drawings. As a matter of fact, one of the main points of this video is to get your illustrations to look better, even if you're not that good of an illustrator. I just don't want to be sued for copyright infringement. Daddy, these are my original drawings. If you say so. Okay, let's get back on track here. So I took like eight of the drawings that had promise out of the 50 or so sketches that I did. And I traced them over again and did some refinements. And I'm going to keep repeating this process over and over until I get something that I feel is working. So it looks like you drew a bunch of robots, but this guy's clothes is torn like a zombie. Yeah, you bring up a good point, Daddy. Well, that's why you hired me. Hmm. There will absolutely be no money exchange. Well, that's a bummer. But now would be a good time to explain the overall concept. Proceed. <laughs> So I wanted to build a simple fun game for kids and adults that can be played outside during the summer. And the first name that I came up with was Zombie Frisbee. And I wanted these uh, targets to be zombies and you throw frisbees at them and knock them down. But there's a big problem with this. You can't just use the word frisbee because it's a copyrighted word. I, I told you like a minute ago you were gonna get in trouble for this. That was for a different thing. And yet the results are the same. They're gonna sue the pants off of us. I'm almost positive they would pay you good money to keep them on. Hey, everyone, he made a joke. Anyway, I decided to change the name to Zombie Frizzbot. And that way, uh, the company Whammo can't sue me. With a name like Whammo, it sounds like they would enjoy suing people. So, uh, good call for once. Now the rules to Zombie Frisbot are pretty simple. You just set up the targets at about waist height. You decide how far you want to be away from the target depending on the kid's age. Then you throw a freaking frisbee at it and hit the target. By the way, I'm not a huge fan of this graphic that you made. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen these. They're called sticky bones. They're uh, highly posable figures. I use them for drawing reference from time to time. I'm gonna use these to try to give some more dynamic poses to uh, my drawings. Now, I'm going to take a picture of this pose so I can get it in the computer. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. Now, I'm just cutting around this drawing and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, separate as much of the drawing as possible. I'm going to bring in the picture and then I'm going to overlay the pictures and the drawings and I'm going to cut out different parts of it, almost like it was a paper dowel. And that's going to allow me to be able to manipulate the pose. I'm just getting these to approximately the same scale and then uh, lower the opacity so that I can see both images better. 
Just try to get the main parts to line up. If this is as painfully boring to the audience as it is for me, you just lost a whole bunch of subscribers. Well, this channel is about showing people how to do different processes and using different tools in order to do crafts. And this is just all part of it. Boo. Boring. Well, what would you suggest I do? Well, let me pay you a rare compliment. So uh, prepare to soak it in because uh, it won't come around very often. I'm prepared. Anyway. Uh, I like the idea of you making a game that the kids can play during the summer because I am sick and tired of these dirty faced little kids all coming around and saying, hey, Uncle Claude, give us a handful of cherry bombs. Hey, uh, Mr. Dottie, can you let me shoot your pellet gun? Or please, 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 Mr. Claude, let us use your crossbow. Or how about this one? It's my all time favorite. Hey, uh, no, Claude, you looking awful handsome today. Can we play with the lawn darts? And these are all activities that are gonna land you in a court of law with a major lawsuit. I can give you more examples, but I got three cases pending. I'm not allowed to talk about them. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So uh, up here on the screen, what I did was I took the picture of the reference uh, figure of my Sticky Bones posable figure, and I filled it in with white. So it's like the paper and then I put a stroke around it so that it's much easier for me to see the alignment to tell the difference between the two parts to see where the limb joints are and to try to connect them. So it's just kind of a back and forth between all the parts. Now here what I'm doing is cutting out each individual limb and then now I can cut it, see that? And then I can rotate it and line it up with where the limbs are supposed to go. I also change the stroke to red around the posable figure so that it just makes it easier to see. And I'm going to just keep repeating this process. Kind of line things up, stretch them, distort them until they're pretty close to fitting. Now you might be saying, well, Tino, why are you doing all of this? I ask myself that question about five times a day about you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to end up printing these out one more time. And then I'm going to trace them again and keep adding on. So I'm refining the drawing step by step. And this just helps me because like I said earlier, I'm not a very good illustrator, but I'm going to keep working on that. Hey, I don't know if you noticed, but my wife, she paints. And she did this one called Living Voodoo Doll. And this girl has uh, some complexion issues. And she's also pretty accident prone when it comes to her sewing hobby. So uh, she decided to take on other hobbies and well, yeah, to each their own, I guess. In the background, you can see that there's an ecological disaster happening. I'm pretty sure that's the least of her concerns. Anyway, this is called Living Voodoo Doll by Magwar. Go check her out. One thing that I find really fun about crafting is coming up with different processes, especially for things that uh, I may not be very good at to start off with, like illustration, for example. It's fun to just find different ways to use all these tools that we have access to, because in the end, it's not as important how you do something. It's more important how the final product comes out and that you're happy with it. So if you're not at the level that you wanna be, as far as illustrating, then uh, one thing I can say is that do more sketching and also use the tools available. Try some of these tricks that I'm showing you. They uh, usually work for me and uh, I think they'll work for you. And as a matter of fact, here's a great example. I cannot draw a good saw blade, but watch. Using this trick here, what we're gonna be able to do is have a symmetrical saw blade, but in the end, it's still gonna have a hand-drawn look. So watch, we just make a circle and we got one little saw blade tooth that we made. Now I'm gonna just keep copying this thing, turning it over, put it on the other side. And then uh, what you do is if you put the two layers together, right, like that, now you duplicate it and look, you turn it, holding down the shift key, it's gonna lock it down. And what I mean by that is uh, it turns it by degrees. It's just uh, locking into certain degree increments. So now I copy all these blades 
and I turn it again. Not going. Come on, do you know? There we go. There we go. Oof. There we go. That's a saw blade. Oh, wait. I need a little hole in the middle. So, look, I'm going to use these guides. I hit the transform tool, which shows me where the center is. See the little center in the circle? And now i got to actually turn the guides on so I can see them. And now I know exactly where the center of the saw blade is. So watch, I'm going to make a little circle. Boop. Yeah, you see, you fill it in with a color. And then just uh, put it where you want. And then I align the limbs a little bit better. And then duplicate the whole saw blade. Look at that. Let me show you a couple of other ones in fast motion. What you doing? Daddy. Daddy. What? What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, no? I'm watching a freaking zombie movie. Another zombie movie? I think it's time that they give that genre a rest. It's like kicking a dead horse. There's no horses in this one, just zombies. What I mean is, it's just the same movie over and over again. See, Tinu, now your ignorance is showing. These zombies can drive. And how on earth would that work? Well, if somebody would stop talking to me, I could watch the rest of the movie and find out. Next thing you know, you want a progress report on how the zombies pass their driving test. Hey, how about we do some zombie-themed crafts together since you're so in love with zombies? Now they're hacking into the CIA and I have no idea how they got there. Thanks, Tinu. This movie is stupid. It's not my fault you don't understand the finer points of cinema. Oh. Hey, Tinu, come back. You gotta see this. They flying now. So I printed out all the changes from Photoshop, then I traced it over again, and I made adjustments. So now I'm inking them in so that I can kind of get a sense of the designs and if they need more changes. Man, why are you always fronting? Excuse me? Are you making fun of my posture? Because that's not cool. Oh, thank goodness we're doing something different. I was getting sick of looking at the little monsters on the computer and the paper. Well, it's good to know that you entertained. Although, this is pretty boring also. It's just a white board. Why are you even showing this? Because it's a step in the process. This is a piece of birch plywood. It's really nice and smooth, a fine piece of wood. And uh, I use kilts too to prime it out. And then now I'm just measuring out some squares so that I could uh, make the targets for my zombie frizz box. Is that my blue tape? Nope. Well, it sure looks like my blue tape. Yeah, pretty much all blue tapes look exactly the same. That's my tape. Anyway, I'm putting this underneath the jigsaw so that it uh, it's not going to like scratch up the prime surface that I already did. Oh my god, Tinu, why didn't you just cut it first and then paint it? Uh, yeah, that's a valid way to go about it, no doubt. But um, I just wanted to paint it all at once with a roller. Yeah, right. Hey, if you're having as much fun here as I am, then uh, go ahead and press the like button. And if you really want to let your hair down and live large, then press the subscribe button. That, uh, that really helps me out. All right, back to the program. So in order to transfer these drawings onto the wood, I'm using a projector. And from the 
bottom of the feet to the top of the head they're approximately about 18 inches and uh what i'm doing is just blocking the light a little so i can see the drawing underneath it now there's many different ways that you can uh transfer drawings see that if you block the light that just helps you get a better sense of what's going on there's many different ways you can transfer these drawings uh here's an old school technique you just uh, take some lead and uh, cover the back of a piece of paper. And if you're real fast like me, it takes no time. And then you put your drawing over it, tape it down, and then uh, you can transfer it. Now, I'm transferring this one as a uh, test. I like to do tests in order to figure out if it's working. Uh, I like to check the medium and the substrate, which is the thing that you're putting uh, the stuff on, the drawings on. Now, I don't like the test colors that I'm using here. However, the watercolor is sticking just fine to the panel, which is uh, what I wanted to check. Make sure that that would work out. Hair and protection. Hey, wait, I always see you wearing those around the house. I thought those were headphones. No, they block out sounds and they also serve to uh, ward away unwanted opinions. Now you see, when you say something like that, it's hard for me not to think that it's aimed directly at me. That's because it is. You know what? I'm glad. I'm glad that the audience gets to hear how my son treats me, and on Father's Day, no less. It's not Father's Day. That's besides the point. Okay, I cut these out, I sanded down the edges, and now I'm just touching up any little minor blemishes that happen with some kilts too. This is what's usually referred to as a color study. These are just printed out on the card stock, and uh, I just like to try different color combos. You can do this on a computer if you want, but uh, I really wanted to start getting a feel for the watercolors before I committed to doing them on the panels. Do you know, sometimes you gotta throw caution to the wind and just uh, go for it. Well, when I'm crafting, I use a lot of different mediums, and I'm always kind of moving medium to medium. So in order to kind of get my... Uh, sea legs back in a certain medium i have to do test so that i can kind of get my groove back i can't believe you said that with a straight face here's something that i do all the time when using watercolor i like to use the same surface as uh, i'm gonna paint on as sort of my palette uh, if i'm using paper i want to use paper this time i'm using wood that's been uh primed so I'm gonna use that as my palette. What this does is it helps give me a really, really good sense of how things are gonna look when they're actually going on the final piece of work. And don't be afraid to mix media. Here I'm using a Sharpie. Somebody likes fancy toenails. Fancy. Hey, these came out better than I thought they would. Oh, thank you for your seal of approval. Uh, let's not get carried away.
look at it. Flush. This is my new little friend that I made while I was outside working in the yard. Isn't he beautiful? Okay, I'm trying to rack up some uh, style points here. This is looking a little more like a carnival game. And here's all my zombie frizz bots, finished up and ready to go. Now I was having trouble coming up with some names for these, so I asked my Patreons and they really delivered. This is Kitty Con Carnage. And meet the underwater undertaker, Jacques Carpso. Hey, watch out! Here comes Betty Buzzkill, queen of the undead derby. This unpleasant creature is called the Mind Muncher, Louis Lobotomy. And last but not least, this is the Cadaver Cowboy, aka Messy James. So, only you and I can stop these guys, Daddy, from taking over the earth. You better get to it. Do you know, I'm like a sniper with a frisbee. No, 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 don't say frisbee. These guys don't stand a chance. You know, whatever, I'm going first. What? Two in one shot. Watch and learn. Oh, the bar is too high. Yeah? I don't think so. Beginner's look. Air ball. I'm gonna get it, watch. Got a ball. Here's how it's done. Oh, come on. Boom, daddy, boom, daddy, boom. This game is not that fun. in paradise a heartwarming limb dropping romp along the beaches of bali you'll laugh you'll cry you'll get eaten alive tonight on zbs 